Hi, my name is Desiree Pointer Mace. I'm the Associate Dean of the School of Education at Alverno. I'd like to welcome you or welcome you back to Alverno. We're so glad that you've chosen our program to get um, advanced study or advanced experience in your professional context or discipline. One of the things that I'd love to go over with you are what we really see as the characteristics of advanced professional study. To us, advanced professional work goes beyond the knowledge base of your first degree. So whatever you've been to college for before, you should be stretching beyond that. You should be asking questions of your professional context and conducting um, strategic uh, efforts to try and get answers to those questions. You should be collaborating with your professional colleagues. You should be presenting to others uh, what you know, and you should be stretching. So connected to those characteristics, we have some um, values that undergird our ability-based education program and that will help advance your work. Basically, what ability-based education means that we are linking our course goals to a, a really clear vision about what it is that we expect you to be able to do with your advanced program. And then we link those goals to criteria that inform particular projects, assignments, or assessment throughout your program. And then we engage you in reflecting about your growth toward those outcomes related to those criteria. There are five key abilities that we are developing in our graduate uh, programs for education. And they, together, they describe that portrait of the graduate. The first is conceptualization. You've got to know what, you, what, what you're talking about. You've got to be a good um, mathematician if you're going to teach math. You've got to be adept in understanding learning frameworks if you're going to facilitate learning in others. You've got to understand content and learning theory and uh, how systems work together. Another ability is diagnosis. You've got to ask good questions, you've got to observe, you've got to seek answers to those questions, and then you've got to come back to the original assumptions to try and uh, understand at a deeper level uh, the people that you serve as learners and the context that you're in. The third is coordination. coordination. You've got to bring to bear lots of different resources on a learning situation. Um, if you're a special educator, you've got to bring together parents and uh, kids' learning goals and resources and technology in support of that child <coughs> in order to do your work. So too, if you are in an instructional design setting, in a, an adult learning or corporate setting, you need to think about what are those resources, who are those people, how am I going to bring them all together in one learning situation. Communication. You've got to be able to make yourself clear and well understood by others. And that's not just through your speaking and your writing, although those are certainly important, but also how do you use media? How do you use visuals? How do you use interactive features in support of helping your learners uh, develop? And then and how do you keep in touch with what your audience, need, audience needs are um, as far as, as when you're teaching, developing their, um, their understanding? Integrative interaction has to do with how you advocate for your learners, how you convey to them that you believe in them, how you develop relationships in this ultimately very relational profession that um, connect people to each other. You can't just stand in front of a wall and be a good teacher. You've got to actually believe in the people that you're developing as, uh, as learners, and you've got to be able to facilitate that sense that, um, that you are connected in support of their ultimate learning. So you can see that there are some connections between these characteristics of the program and these abilities. So we're develop when you go beyond your baccalaureate, we're developing your conceptualization, and so on. Um, all of these are oriented around your stretching. So in our learning process, then, we promise to you these characteristics, clear goals, criteria, samples of performance, expert judgment, feedback, self-assessment, and reflection. So that means that when we're promising you clear goals, we want to give you clear course outcomes that in any class you'll know what you should be able to do with what you know after the class is over. And then every learning experience during that course should be pointed toward those outcomes. Then the faculty, and in some cases co-constructed with the students, develop criteria so that you can say how good is good enough, basically. And, and then you can use those uh, to basically provide that basis for your own self-assessment. We're going to gather multiple samples of performance. This is not a place with one final exam or a quiz uh, that we want to see 
uh, various ways in which you are demonstrating your excellence related to the outcomes so that we've got a really full picture of your level of abilities. Then what our job is, is to guide your development through that assessment process and to give you detailed feedback about how you've done in relationship to those criteria that you've been given or that you've helped to construct. Then we give you feedback using those criteria to give you a sense of what you did well and where your growth areas are and where you can go next. Lastly, but perhaps most importantly, you need to be engaged in a process of examining your own learning and there are two ways that that's done. One is self-assessment in relationship to particular performances, um, in relationship to criteria, but also reflection where you're looking at multiple things over time and how you are growing and developing related to your professional context. We also, lastly, want to really stay connected with you. Uh, our grad newsletter is released every uh, two weeks during the semester, and it's always going to be at this URL. We use that both to push information out to our graduate students, but also to uh, stay connected with you if there are things in your professional setting, um, uh, recognitions you've received, or, think, or job postings that you want to make uh, uh, available to your colleagues, this is a good way to do it. So we really do encourage you to stay in touch with us. Uh, we are so glad that you're here at Alverno. Um, we want you to make sure that, that uh, when you're here that you are uh, engaged in um, ethical and professional work. Um, we will give these to you, send them to you electronically. We'd like you to uh, sign them and return them. And then, uh, but basically we, we just hold ourselves and you to high expectations throughout the course of your program. Thank you very much and we're very glad that you're here. Have a wonderful day and don't hesitate to contact me with any questions you may have about your program at Alverno.